<clears throat> All right, hey, you got your exit card tomorrow um, on using Newtons to solve real-world problems. Largely, these real-world problems are navigation problems about a plane flying in the air or a boat floating on the water, but um, it could be about any forces in general. Um, so the worksheet I gave you in class today was about three people exerting force on the same object, and what would the resultant force be? Um, so I'm just going to kind of share these answers, and I again, I used that website, this one that I was talking about. Um, if you just type a uh, vector calculator into Google, this thing comes up and you can plug in your magnitudes and your directions. Again, make sure that the angles that you plug in are standard position angles or they won't work. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go through the answers real fast. And the third one, the boat one, I'll talk about. And then maybe I'll do one more homework problem too if I can. But I'm running a little bit out of time. So let me just go, go, go. Let's see what I see. All right, turn that back off. There we go. All right. Um, so anyway, the the vectors, they're starting with the red vector, the Bugs Bunny. That one's pretty obviously just um, a vector whose horizontal component is zero and whose, um, and whose vertical component is 95 in a downward direction. Okay. Uh, I got interrupted and I don't remember where I was, but I'm pretty sure I was talking about the red vector, which I don't think you need a formula for. Um, it goes straight down, and because it goes straight down, you know that its vert vertical component would be its magnitude, but negative, and its horizontal component would be zero. Um, for the blue one, the blue one is the hardest one of the three uh, because you're given this 38 degree angle, but that's not the angle you want to use. Um, its standard position direction angle, hopefully you see, would be 180 minus the 38. That's where the 142 comes from. Um, so I'm just plugging in into the website. I'm plugging in the magnitude, 111, plugging in the direction angle, 142, and it just automatically generates these components. But let's say you are not allowed to use the website, which of course, you're not allowed to use it tomorrow. Then where do those components come from? Uh, well, it's a simple formula, remember? You just do the magnitude times the cosine of the standard position angle. And so 111 times the cosine of 142, that's what's giving us the negative 87.469. And then the vertical component is just the magnitude times the sine of the standard position angle. That's what's giving us the 68.338. So finding these components and resolving them down is uh, pretty simple, even with just a regular calculator. Now the green vector is another kind of easy one because it's in quadrant one. So this 43 degree reference angle that you're given happens to also be the standard position angle. Um, so you know your magnitude is the 64, the direction is 43 and out pop those components. So right here, this is all three of the, th of the vectors that you're given. And in part B now it says, Express the sum of the three forces as a vector in component form, name it R. That's the resultant force. That's the one force um, that results from all three forces, imagining if they happen simultaneously. And so right here, the website did a good job of graphing that for us. You see, oops, oops, I did something. Okay, um, but you see that the resultant force would be the sum of the red vector happening first, so that would push us straight down. Unfortunately, the y-axis is also red, and it looks like a vector, but ignore that little swatch of red. Um, we start at the origin, we get pushed straight down by the Bugs Bunny vector. Then the Yosemite Sam vector wants to push us this way with a pretty strong force, 111, so suddenly we're going that way. And then the Tweety Bird is pushing us this way, not quite as strongly as the others. But you can see that because all three forces kind of oppose each other, the resultant force is this black one here. It's the one that goes from the tail of the Bugs Bunny to the tip of the Tweety Bird. That black vector is the resultant force. It goes, you know, roughly in the same direction as the SAM vector, but it's much shorter because it's opposed by the other two. Blah, blah, blah. I'll shut up. 
but that drawing there is um, this vector that's given right here on the website. That's the sum of the previous three. So I enlarge that, put it right here. But the components are negative 40 and positive 16, which does seem to um, jive with our expectation, which is getting a vector that is negative a lot and then positive a little. So negative 40, positive 16, that makes sense with the sketch that I'm seeing. Um, so I feel good about it. Uh, by the way, if this was R1 and R2, which of course it is, then to find the magnitude now, you just use your magnitude formula, which says that the magnitude of vector R is just the square root of R1 squared plus R2 squared. And that's where this number is coming from, 44.068 technically. Um, and that's measured in Newtons. A lot of people did not bother to read what I wrote up here in this cloud. But the N that you guys see, some people, a lot of people thought it was like north, but no, it's not north, it's Newtons, which is a unit of force, uh, Newtons. All right, and finally, down here, when you have to find the direction of vector R, um, well, we can find phi using the same old formula we've been using, which is inverse tangent of the uh, vertical component, R2, divided by the uh, horizontal component, R1, I like to do the absolute value so everything comes out positive. Um, but that's it, and that should return to you an angle of 22.672. And then from here you've got some options. Um, how do I do this? There we go. Um, if you are going to express the direction of the vector in standard position, then you can see that your standard position angle would be 180 minus um, phi, um, and so that would give you 157 degrees, and that would be fine. Um, you could also give the direction as a bearing, uh, and your bearing you can see would be 270 plus phi, so 292.672. Um, the main thing here I would say is because I didn't really ask you to give me a specific method for naming it, you better tell me what you're doing. You can't just say to me, the answer is 157. 0.328. If you do that without telling me that that's a standard position, I'm going to play dumb and I'm going to go, bearing? Is this a bearing? Question mark? And I'm going to take half a point off. Um, so tell me that no, this is not a bearing. Tell me that this is standard position and you're getting this answer. But make sure you label um, what kind of answer your answer is or I'm going to dock you. Um, but that's it for that one. The next one I'm not going to go over in such great depth because it's the same old, same old. Um, but you can see here, you can look at it and see that the Bugs Bunny vector would be a magnitude of 59 acting in a 90 degree direction, which just gives you the vector 0, 059. The Yosemite Sam one is um, has a magnitude of 82. The direction would be 180 plus the 21. That's why you see me using 201 as my angle here, which generates these components. And the Tweety Bird one's easy, 28 magnitude, and 44 truly is the direction, so there's those components. Uh, the website will now automatically do the sum of all those components to get to the resultant. Um, so you're literally just adding those previous guys to get this guy here. And that's the component form of the resultant. Again, you see me just... Um, blowing it up here. Those, that should be the um, resultant vector in component form. The uh, magnitude comes from the formula we already talked about in the last one. You just do your R1 squared plus your R2 squared. Take the square root of that. There's your magnitude. And same thing for direction. You're just going to do inverse tangent of vertical over horizontal components. And for this one, I got a reference angle of like 41-ish which means your standard position would be 180 minus that, so about 140. Um, and your heading or bearing would be 270 plus that, so about 311, 311-ish, yeah. And again, just make sure you indicate whether you're giving me an answer that is a standard position angle or a bearing. Um, the other thing that you are allowed to do, of course, is just say, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say this. You can't do this on the quiz, but right now, because nobody made a big deal about how to give your direction, you could just kind of say, hey, uh, my direction is 41.015 degrees north 
of West. Although I think it's been brought to my attention recently that you're really never supposed to say north of west. You're always supposed to go east or west of north or south. You're always supposed to be taking the y-axis as your sort of benchmark and either going, going west of that, going west of north or east of north, or going west of south or east of south. Um, it doesn't matter to me, though. If I ever left it ambiguous enough that I just had, I just said find the direction, then you could um, convey it to me however, and it would be fine. But I'm not gonna do that. Like I said, um, on the actual quiz, we will for sure talk about bearing. The bearing, bearing, bearing. Okay, anyway. So I wanted to do this one a little more thoroughly. So that's kind of just right, but it's a little too big. How about this? Sure, we'll do this. All right, um, so in part A here, it's saying express all three vectors in component form, so fine. It says a radio-controlled boat is zooming across the surface of a lake such that if it were not affected by any other forces, its speed would be 6.7 meters per second on a bearing of 205. That means that's the boat. I'm going to go ahead and call that B, vector B for boat. And that's just going to be the 6.7 magnitude times the cosine of... 205. Haha, ha, just kidding. You can never use the bearing angle. That'll always be wrong. Um, so make sure you kind of sketch. I don't know. Maybe y'all don't need to sketch it out, but I do. So what's 205 look like? It starts from north, yeah? And 205 would have me rotating around 180, then an extra 25. So what I definitely know is that this reference, oh, well, that's not a reference angle, but that angle right there is 25. So what's the standard position angle then? Well, my standard position angle would be 270 minus the 25. That's what would give me my standard position. So 270 minus 25 is feeling like 245. Yeah, that feels right. Um, so you better use that number as you go to calculate your component form or it's not going to come out right. So it's got to be 245 degrees, and that'll do it. Then we do 6.7 times the sine of 245. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the next couple ones are less convoluted. Um, but where are we? It says, uh, well, this is the real world. So there are other forces, like wind, which is blowing due west. Now, due west means exactly west. So if you're going to sketch that out, when I say due west, I mean literally dead west. So that would mean a 180 degree standard position angle. But again, this is another one of those ones where if it's due west at 2.5, then you can tell, I hope, that that vector in component form is literally just a horizontal component of 2.5, but it goes left, so it's negative. And it has no vertical component because it literally goes due west. So you're done. Um, and finally, um, a jet ski went flying by, which created a wake. And that wake created a current. And that current um, had a 4.8 meter per second thingamajigger. Wait, wind? and Well, we were calling this current rather than wake. So the current vector, C, has a component that is 4.8. Um, and then it's on a bearing of 25 degrees. All right, what's a bearing of 25? That would be, boop, and this is 25. So the standard position angle would be the complement of 25, which is 65. So we're going to do 4.8 cosine 65. And we're going to do 4.8 um, sine of 65. And I think I'm fine with this, right? Yeah, because I'm saying express all three forces as vectors in component form. Express them both exactly and as decimals. Well, this is them exactly expressed. The only way to express them exactly is to leave it in terms of sine and cosine, because to if we tried to actually resolve that, then we'd get decimals we had to round off. Um, name them appropriately. I don't think I care about also giving them as decimals. You could leave it this way, and I think that's fine. Um, but now the real important thing is we got to get to the resultant vector r 
but you literally just add these components. And to do that, you just bust out your calculator and hit the buttons. Speaking of that, let me go get a calculator. All right, I got a calculator. I thought I got a calculator. See, I got a calculator. So, um, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna type all this mess in. Uh, I'm gonna go 6.7 cosine 245. And I'm in degree mode, I double checked. Um, so I'm getting that as a component. Um, now I did say to y'all that it would behoove you. Uh oh, I screwed up. This is about, this is about to not work. Um, why is this happening? All right, it's not letting me do what I wanted to do, um, but that's okay. You guys can probably see it here anyway. Um, I wanted to say that, of course, I love to store these variables. You guys know I'm into that. Um, now we have three um, vectors, and I like to store them as AB, and then DE, and then IJ, and then the resultant will be NO, because I like to just work down these columns. That makes sense to me to just do it like that. So forget about C and F and G and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and store the first component of the first vector as A. Then I'm going to store the first component of the next one, which, by the way, I can just grab my previous entry, change cosine to sine. Boom, there's my next one. I'm going to store that as B. And that's it. Those are the components of that first vector. Um, then I'll clear all this. We'll start again. Um, the next vector is negative 2.5. I can store that as D and E should probably be defaulting to zero anyway. Yeah, it is. Um, but if it wasn't, you'd just go zero store as alpha E. Now I've got my second vector stored and my third vector is the 4.8 times the cosine of 65, which is positive two. We're going to store that as I. Then we're going to do the 4.8 sine 65 and store that as alpha j. Okay, great. So everything from part A is stored now, which means to get the components for vector r, we can literally just go alpha a plus alpha d plus alpha i. And those are all the horizontal components from before. I'm going to take that number, store that as n, and there's my component. Okay. And I'll do it again for the vertical components. The vertical components would be the second column stuff. So it's B plus alpha E plus alpha J. Enter. Um, we're going to store that as alpha O. And so that's it. Those values, alpha N, alpha O, that's my component. So I'm going to write that down as my answer to part B. Um, I lost my calculator. I can't really read that. Um, negative 3.303. It's a lot of threes. And my vertical component is negative 1.722. Right, I got good news for you. The rest of this is now a piece of cake because if we now want to find... Well, that's pretty far. If we now want to find the um, true speed of the boat, that's just the magnitude. So isn't that going to be the magnitude of R, which would be the absolute value of now. Technically, this is R1, R2, right? But wait, didn't we just store it in our calculator as N and O? So I can literally type into my calculator just n squared plus o squared. Take the square root of it. I'm going to get my answer. No, I don't need you to show a lot of work. I just need you to know how to do it and get to the right answer. So literally just type in square root of alpha n squared plus alpha o squared. Boom. There's your magnitude. 3.725. And I don't remember what our units were. We're talking about a boat, so meters per second. Um, so the speed of the boat would be 3.725 meters per second. Put a box around that, we're done. Now to find the true bearing, we're gonna find the 
inverse tangent of? Is it R2 over R1? Actually, no, it's O over N because we intelligently stored our data in our calculator. Um, now, both of these are negative, so this will come out positive anyway. So I don't need to worry about the absolute value stuff. But honestly, even if you ignored the absolute value stuff, you're going to get the right number. And if the number is ever negative, you can just ignore the negative and it and uh, it'll be the correct number. But we just want to always treat it as positive. So it almost doesn't matter whether the absolute value bars were inside or outside. Just take your final answer and make it positive if it ever comes out negative. Um, and that's fine. I think that's fine. So we're going to go inverse tangent of vertical component, which is O divided by horizontal component N. Boom. So 27. So 27 is never the correct bearing. Um, 5, 3, 5. Now that would be the correct standard position angle if we were in quadrant 1. But we know that we're not in quadrant 1. Even though we don't have any drawing going at all, we can see in our component form that both components are negative. So that component form is telling us that our vector goes left kind of a lot and down by only a little. So we should be expecting um, a standard position angle that would be 180 plus V. Um, but you're not allowed to give me a standard position angle anyway. You got to give me the bearing. Um, so the bearing would be 270 minus V. Yeah, totally. Um, so make sure you indicate you're giving me a heading slash bearing. Make sure you show me some kind of work that tells me you know where this answer is coming from. Just show me that it's 270 minus V. And then go ahead and do that math. Um, by the way, it's all still sitting in your calculator, right? So just go, to, I mean, you could actually just go minus 270. This will come out negative, but you know to just ignore the negative. It's positive, 242465. And that's it. All right, um, so that's three practice problems. Now again, I did say in class, all three of these practice problems were using three vectors. And your quiz tomorrow won't use three. It'll only ever use two. Um, so the only other thing you really have to be careful with here is if there's ever a problem that talks about, um, you know, a heading uh, from rather than on a heading. If it's from a heading, then it's backward, remember? Let me get rid of whatever this crunk is. But we talked about how if there was a force that acts on a heading of 100 degrees, then that would literally rotate 100 degrees this way. The 100 means it's 10 degrees beyond the x-axis. So that would be a standard position angle of, let's say, negative 10 degrees. But if you had a force that acted from a bearing of 100 degrees, then you'd use the 100 degrees just to figure out what direction that's pointed in. That would go this way. But if your vector actually acts from that direction, then you'd have to imagine the line that contains that vector. And our force would be this green force that goes the exact opposite way. And what would that mean? That would mean that this 10 degree reference angle that we got from our 100 degree bearing, well that 10 would translate over to here by vertical angles. This would be 10 degrees, which means our standard position angle for the guy that acts um, from a bearing of uh, 100 degrees would be 170. It would be the 180 minus the 10. Um, so again, just keep, keep track of that language. Uh, if you hear the word from, then take extra care to make sure it's good. I think I'm done. Got to go give my kids baths. Uh, yeah. Oh, I am going to post uh, the answer key, though, to all those homework problems. That problem about a DC-10 and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I guess I should say I alluded to this in one of the periods. I don't know if it was second or third. Hopefully both. But I did say there was this other weird notation about 40 you know, north 40 E. Um, this would be 40 degrees east of north. 
And uh, if you look here, just a quick Google search gave me this. It's showing you that the direction of A from O, so from the origin to A, is N30E. So you can see that that's 30 degrees east of north. So it's almost like you want to read this as it's saying, it's basically saying like, go north, but 30 degrees east of there. So I think if you kind of want a way to read this naturally, um, then stick the word but in there. And like it's, it's saying your direction is north, but 30 degrees east of north, and then you go in that way. So if that ever happened, what would your standard position angle be? It would be 60 degrees. Okay, um, same thing here. Um, N60W would be go north, but 60 degrees west of north. So as a standard position angle, that would be 150. Uh, I'll shut up. You're not likely to see that notation anyway. I'm going to kind of shield you from it because I don't like it. Um, but hopefully this was helpful. Uh, sure, it would be nice if you guys told me tomorrow that this was helpful so that I could actually feel like the effort that I put in was worth it. Okay, bye.